Hello, this is Sandra Hart at Life Over 60 with Sandra. 20 years ago this week, I started out on a 365 mile journey for closure. I wanted to be able to begin my life again and to be able to talk about something that I hadn't spoken of in 20 years. My journey began before you came. I didn't know part of the way you were to walk with me. I traveled unknowingly, seeking roads along the way, looking for that perfect life, an Eden where we could stay. Sometimes the way was unclear. We often journeyed in darkness, misguided by my ignorance and complicated by my innocence. I have taken you places you may never have been had destiny not chosen you to travel along with me. Your journey will take its own course and, as was meant to be, I will continue along my path, guided by choices yet unknown to me. Take my hand and bid farewell. Our paths to touch now and then. Each journey's day, I feel blessed. It was meant to be that part of the way you were to walk with me. I think very few of us on this earth have had a perfect life. And very few of us have been able to live a life that we dreamed of without any hiccups along the way. It's easy to say, I can't. I can't go through this. I can't survive this but it's also much easier to say, I can, I really can. 20 years ago, as I said, this week, I was traveling by car the 365 miles from New Jersey to the Allegheny Mountains in Pennsylvania and a small hunting town there. I was trying to find closure in my life, a life that for 20 years I couldn't even talk about. My close friends knew what I'd gone through, but none of my people that I worked with, none of my outside friends even knew that I had gone through a period of my life for 10 years that was absolutely hell, if you want to really be honest about it. My husband was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and he was very dangerous. He'd been in and out of hospitals and the children and I were terrified of him when he wasn't taking his medicine. When he took his medicine, he was a different person. He was the man that I married and that I loved. But when he stopped taking his medicine, he became a threat He became dangerous, and it was a frightening situation for all of us around him, especially my children. I really thought at that time, how am I going to survive this? How am I going to be able to be in the vicinity of this, my husband, without perhaps losing my life or perhaps having something really terrible happened to me. Well, in 1980, I got a phone call from the state police in this tiny town in Pennsylvania saying that my husband had disappeared and had I seen him. Well, I knew that he had gone hunting and he hadn't been around, but they suspected that he had been a victim of physical harm 
he had been murdered. That phone call released me in a way because I knew I was free from any type of stalking, but it also snapped the lid on any closure going forward that I would ever have in my life. I am a survivor, and I didn't know that at the time. And some of the things I'm going to be talking about you today, talking with you uh, about today, are tools that we can use to survive. And these are things that I have learned throughout the years that perhaps all of them I didn't know at that time. The first thing that I didn't do was acceptance. I was in a situation that I thought wouldn't be forever and that would get better. I did not accept the fact that my husband was mentally ill with a terrible illness and probably would never ever be the same again. And that was my first mistake. If you are in a situation that you think, oh, tomorrow it will be better, tomorrow it will change. And if you're in a situation, whether it's being in an abusive relationship, whether it's being in a financial situation and you're just trying to scrape by and survive, whatever your unique situation is, you have to accept it because denial will only complicate matters even more. The next thing I really did do, which you should do as well, if you have close people, whether it's your minister, a friend, a family member that knows the situation in your life, you do have to reach out to them. Let them know what is going on and maybe they will guide you because if you don't have the answers yourself, maybe they will guide you in the right direction because they have an overall view of you and the situation and they might be able to help you better. So acceptance and reaching out to people. The third thing is once you have made a decision to correct and be in survival mode, don't look at the situation in a great big overall way. Take it day at a time, day by day. Work out your survival tactic, your survival mode, day by day. That way it won't seem so enormous. And that's what I had to do. Once I was able to distance myself from my husband and once I found out that he would no longer be there to hurt us, I realized that I was not only free, but I was still alone. I had to be a strong parent for each and every one of my children and I had to be the breadwinner for these three children. I had to survive financially emotionally, and really uh, faithfully to be able to get out of this situation that I was in. So that was this, those might were my survival tools that I had to have to get through this situation. Once I made that decision, I accepted it. I was able to speak to someone about it and I didn't take, I took each step inch by inch. You know, he wasn't paying the mortgage. He wasn't paying the taxes. He went into our bank account and took all of the money, my money, his money. And for, I think, a couple of weeks, we lived, I lived, or the whole family lived on my children's paper money that they had little tiny paper routes locally in our town. But I knew that I was a survivor and that I was not going to give up. So you have to believe in who you are. You have to pick up that self-esteem and know that you are not given anything that you can't survive. And you have to survive, if not for yourself, you have to survive for your children if you are were a single parent like I was. Those were really important tools that I needed to survive.
the next thing that I had to do once I realized my situation and accepted it, I had to just sit down with myself and have a conversation. All right, this is where I am today. But tomorrow is tomorrow. I'm going to take it day by day. But where do I want to be? Where do I want to be when I get out of this survival mode? Just what are my dreams for myself and my children? If you are a widow and you are suffering right now and you're lonely, if you are a single person who is retired and through this COVID situation, you feel like there is no hope and you're a little bit depressed, you can do anything. And you can, while you're sitting there in, a, in this situation, whatever you're in, you can plan for tomorrow. When this is all over, this is where I want to be. So you can take that uh, angst that you have now and channel it into something positive and say, this is where I want to be and I know that it can happen. And that's kind of where a dream board comes into play. I know it sounds very small and insignificant, but you really have to sit down and say, all right, these are my goals. This is what I am going to do to survive. I think I can, and I know I can, and it will happen. These are really important things. If I didn't have those goals in mind, I could have just rolled up into a fetal position and, and felt it was all over and just accepted, poor old me, you know, I'm going to lose my house. Uh, you know, I'm going to have to work full time and my kids are all going to be alone and I don't have enough money for a babysitter and woe is me, what am I going to do? I didn't do that and you cannot do that. You have to make a plan because when there's a plan and when there is the will, trust me, there is a way. There really is. As I said, it took me 20 years to really talk about this and to sit down and in front of my word processor and to start to write out what happened to me, how it was living through his illness, how I went to Pennsylvania and I got answers and I found closure. That was the best thing I could ever done. And I overrode my fear of going into a situation that I thought maybe might be harmful for me, that maybe I too would have been killed by snooping around and and to asking the wrong questions to the wrong people. But I had faith that I was going to be protected and that I wanted this so desperately that I knew that I was going to be okay. And by my doing that, I have become a more compassionate person I think I have been coming, I've become a more giving person and I have become a more understanding person of people who are suffering. I had to walk this walk. I had to go through this fire to be who I am today. And that's what you will be doing too. You have to go through this fire, but you have to make the decision that you are a survivor and that you are going to survive whatever it is you are going through. I took my story and I made a very small abridged version of it that I donate to women's shelters. And when I go into women's shelters, I tell them the very same thing. You have made that first step to freedom. You have made that first step to changing your life and getting on to the next chapter. But your self-esteem has probably suffered because of you went through. But here is a time to heal. Here is a time to build your self-esteem. And look at me. If I can do it, you can do it. They often say that sometimes the worst and hardest moments in our lives 
are what lead us to the very best moments in our lives. And I'm living proof that that can happen. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you really do something wonderful for yourself and of course I always say to share the happiness but also believe that you are worthy and that you deserve a happy life and you deserve to be a survivor. Take care and I hope to see you in my very next video.